I'm Annie Sibonet. I've worked as a chef and traveled the world and found that food tells the story of a country and its culture as well as any language. I've eaten everywhere on earth and when I got to Spain, I knew I found my culinary soulmate. Spaniards are in love with the pig. Everywhere you turn, there are shops dedicated to pork products and you can't walk into a bar without bumping into rows of ham legs hanging from the ceiling. From the forests of Extremadura to the bistros of Barcelona, the story of Spain is truly a pig's tale. During the Spanish Inquisition, pork consumption was one way to prove your loyalty to church and country. If pork was restricted from your diet for religious reasons, you were expelled, or worse. And what started as a dietary decree has evolved into a culinary obsession. Ham, or jamón, is eaten everywhere in Spain. Every region has its local favorites, but Spain's most iconic ham is the jamón ibérico de bellota, thinly sliced, famous for its velvety texture and rich nutty flavor. It comes from Spain's top hog, the black-hoofed Iberian pig, which roams freely, gorging on fallen acorns in the Dehesa forest of Extremadura. It is here that Carlos Tristancho and his wife Lucia Dominguin, both prominent figures in the arts, traded away their glamorous life to move to the Dehesa Forest, devoting themselves to the preservation of this stunning landscape, running their rural hotel and producing the highest quality Iberian hams. I've come here, as many have come here, to Rocamador Hotel to learn about the tradition of the Matanza, or the pig festival here in Extremadura. The Matanza is a Spanish ritual where families get together one weekend during the winter months to butcher the pigs, make the sausages, and preserve the meat that will supply them with pork for the whole year. Historically, the rural populations that lived permanently on the cusps of poverty needed to get as much out of the pig to sustain them for the year. Today, this tradition, born out of necessity, has been replaced with pure desire. Spain is a nation whose love of pork borders on worship. Carlos and Lucia host these matanzas in their hotel, a reform monastery where today people come to learn about the ritual of matanza and this rare Iberian pig. It's, it's a, a celebration for everybody. For everybody, all the kids and family. Except the pig. <laughs> Except the pig. Well, we need someone to celebrate. Yeah. So these are the loins of the Iberico pig and um, the flesh is actually, it's still warm because it's, it's a fresh animal. These loins are salted and then you take some of this fat and you melt it down and you flavor it with uh, garlic and then wrapped like this and preserved in that way and hung just like chorizos and the other sausages that you see. One of the most important traditions of this matanza is the making and eating of migas, a roasted breadcrumb dish that cooks slowly over gentle fire in oil infused with garlic and peppers. More serenity, more <laughs> And more serenity. <laughs> more history. There's no pork in involved in this migas recipe, but it's just as important to the matanza as the prized pig itself. It's always been a dish eaten throughout the morning of the matanza to keep everyone energized for all the work that needs to be done. Nice. Some coffee with milk or cafe con leche that's been sweetened with sugar. I make this one. And you just dip it into the sweet coffee. It's so good. It's good. Mm. Don't then, get mad at me, but this kind of tastes like um, like a pizza or no, focaccia. Si, 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 si una focaccia <laughs> humera. You'll notice that here in the Matanza, you work oh, and you eat. Everything's going on at the same time. Nothing stops. When some people are eating, other people are working, or it's happening all at the same time. Everybody has their job. The thing about spending a weekend at a Matanza is just when you thought you knew all there was to know about the pig, you learn something new. And in Spain, they butcher it differently than other parts of the world. So you discover new cuts that are totally cherished here. Esta papada se corta, la papada hay que cortarla muy finita porque como tiene una proporción de grasa importante. Looks like it's almost just pure fat, and that's this part of the pig, the papada. You make this only with salt. And that's all. You just rub some salt into the exterior of the papada. Yeah. 
good. It's just like butter on your bread, but more flavorful and salty. Might as well pass some of these around to the rest of the party. <laughs> Would you like some papada? This is a day-long pig party. <laughs> Two days, working, cooking, eating and drinking. The party has just begun. This is so In the Extremadura region of Spain, the two-day matanza ceremony continues as family and friends gather together to celebrate the reverence for the pig. We'll never mind the dirty dishes, dear. You know what I'm thinking. Everyone has a job, and one of the jobs they gave me was to keep my eyes on the prize. In other words, guard the pigs, which is an easy task so long as you watch where you step. And remember to keep the big clothes. <laughs> One of the most important aspects of the matanza is the making of pork sausages that will be enjoyed throughout the year. And I was given a first-hand look at how it's done. Two batches of heaven. <laughs> Here you have the salchichon, which is the non-red sausage, and it's a little bit of a firmer texture, and it's delicious. It doesn't have anything but salt and pepper and sometimes garlic. And this is the king of all sausages. This is the chorizo, which has lots of fresh garlic and paprika or pimenton, as it's known here in Spain. <laughs> this feels good. <laughs> and you can smell that fresh garlic, el ajo. You don't want to help. He says, May chorizo. Here we go. Hey, that looks very different than what I would do. Muchísimas gracias, eh? No, hay He says, I have a whole other batch to do. You can see this is the salchichon, and all that there is in this mixture is black pepper, salt, and salt, and salt. that's it. I prefer to eat it just like that, not with bread. It's un vicio. It's so, so good. Está bueno. This is the best bueno. sauce I've ever had. <laughs> well, you can taste that. It's so fresh sí. that the meat is unbelievably natural. Yes, it's yeah. fantastic. Entonces prueba el chorizo y dímelo también. Está bueno. So nice and moist and succulent. And the smell is incredible. Like it smells like this is packed with spices, but it's no, no. just the yo pimentón. Me, yo me haría un perfume de chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> Depende del gusto también, del uh, el sabor que tengas. But it's not spicy at all. It just has a little bit of a punch. After plenty of hard work, the Matanza fires up into a barbecue party, grilling some of the finest cuts of Iberico pork. This is the piece that has the most buttery flavor that's really succulent. This piece is called secreto in Spanish, or secret in English. And one of the reasons why this is called secret is because normally the people who killed the pigs would steal away this piece before anybody found out about it. Carlos is going to prepare this tenderloin as a tataki, and really what he's going to do is sear this, just sear it on all sides, but it's going to stay perfectly rare in the middle. Estas tres piezas que voy a hacer a la brasa las voy a hacer con una técnica que es totalmente en contra de todos los grandes asadores. ¿En serio? Sí. In Spain, it's common belief among grill masters that you should never salt meat before it goes on the grill because it can dry it out. However, Carlos heavily salts his meat prior to grilling to prove that it is impossible to dry out a piece of Iberico pork because of its fatty and juicy qualities. But unless you're in Spain, don't try this at home. At this barbecue, not all of the meat that's consumed makes it to the grill. Here we're just mixing all of the ingredients for our pork tartare. I don't know when the last time that you ate raw pork, but here you can do this with this pork because it's so fresh. It's so tender and subtly flavored. 
when you have the nice crunch of all of those diced vegetables, the capers, and the small gherkins and the spring onions, that's wonderful. And he's using his bare hands to take the meat out of the oven. <laughs> You put in the water with ice. So no, that it stops the cooking. Good, good yeah. the cooking. Yeah, it no? stops the cooking. The outside is so nice and caramelized and perfectly seared. You just don't see pork this juicy and this succulent like that. The secret piece, secreto. This piece has been cooked through because really it has so much fat that you really want to roast that fat so that it becomes all nice and melted. This is the tataki. The tataki is like the pasta. Don't... Overcook it. No, espera. <laughs> you can see that it's just seared on all sides, but it's completely rare or raw in the middle. Some extra virgin olive oil and some Malden salt or a fine flake sea salt. So I'm going to steal a piece, OK? <laughs> oh, wow. That's so good. No. <laughs> really? I have to at the Matanza, you eat all day as you work, but it always ends in a final meal where everyone gets to take a breath and enjoy the fruits of their labor. Look at who I found here, Maria Jose San Roman. She's a chef from Alicante, and we filmed with her. We've been everywhere, Anya. Food always tastes better when you share. This has been the most unbelievable day. What an incredible experience. Salud. Salud.